Body image is all about a person's self-esteem. And once you get over that massive hurdle of trying to come out, the next stage is trying to figure out how in the world you're going to fit into this brand new community that you find yourself in. And this will often start with how you look and how you behave. The gay community has created some quite clearly defined tribes based on your body. Whether you're fat, thin, hairy, muscular, there is a label for it. Bear, twink, otter, jock, femme, rhino. The rhino isn't one, but you know what, it might as well be. There are a lot of animals in there, that's all I'm saying. These tribes based purely on body image define not only how we look, but supposedly who our friends are and who we have sex with. I want to know why gay culture puts such a heavy pressure on us men to look a certain way, to act a certain way, and what better place to do that than right here in the centre of gay London, Soho. Penises. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Oh, shit. 22. Look for more dick. Look at these. You would be a very, very brave guy to wear a pair of these if you didn't have a banging body. No fucking way. <laughs> it's got padding in it. Oh, look. This is incredible. Why have I not known about this before? Not that I need it. Just saying. These ones are glorious. I don't know if it's because of the gold bottom underneath it, but they are No, quite... they're one of our best sellers, actually, they? yeah. They're, um, I think it's because they're sheer. If you go into Anne Summers, it's all that kind of fabric, and it's sexy, and it's slinky, and here you have it for guys. Do you ever get people coming in who are, feel like there's nothing for them here? We have all walks of the scene coming in, from your very slim, twink-style guy to your very, very large bear-type guy. What, what would you categorise me as? You know, in these, like, tribes, what, what am I? If I saw you coming through the door, I'd probably <laughs> say you were probably very like myself, in that, you know, uh, bottom and, you know, conscious of your body, conscious of your appearance. So would you say that bottoms are a little bit more feminine? The stereotype would be that, yeah, you know, that we do tend to lean more towards that ilk. What would you say if I told you I'm actually a top and I, and I go to the gym? Personally, I'd be very surprised. OK. Mask. Oh, but they also have power bottom. This is the whole thing, isn't it? This is what the whole scene has been broken down to. It's like you're either that or that. There is no in-between. If you're masculine, you're going to be the top. You're going to be the one doing the fucking. And if you're a power bottom, you're a sissy boy, you're a queer, you're a puff, and you're going to be cloud. You're minimised to a sexual act. That's your identity. Penetrate me. I am nothing more. In the act of stereotyping, there's a clear message in the gay community that masculinity is highly prized and femininity is unattractive. I identify myself as a male and I'm gay. I'm a guy that likes to be really feminine. I like to experiment with different things. I've always been this feminine guy. Getting myself ready and heading out, it kind of boosts my confidence actually to wear makeup because I just feel like I'm not the same as everyone else. I look different. I have my own unique style. Growing up, it was kind of like wrong to be gay. So I didn't really fit in. So when I hear comments such as faggot or, you know, gay, queer, all of those, it does take me back to my school days where life was hard and I was still trying to find myself. Femme shaming is when you bash people for being really, really, really feminine. It happens in the gay community a lot. I have experienced being femme shamed, but still I walk with my head high and I still strut my stuff like nobody's business. 
So tell me about your identity. Do I think of myself as a femme tornado? Being me is a full-time job. Okay. I put so much work in, like getting my hair done, you know, spending money on makeup, spending money on my hair, skin. And I've always wore like really feminine clothes as well. So, you know, the tighter, the more revealing, the better, to be honest. What kind of guy do you think is sort of like the most attractive in terms of the gay scene? It's probably the straight acting ones. I don't fit in because most of them don't really like feminine guys. I've been told so many times with the way I'm so feminine and the way I'm so camp that I give gay people a bad name. So like, I don't fit in with the normal crowds, but then I stand out from like the gay community. Is it harder for you to find love then? Um, I would definitely say it's harder, especially when I go out and I'm wearing like batty riders and stuff. Like, who wants a boyfriend? What's a batty rider? Batty riders are like shorts that are like with your bum cheeks hanging out. Oh, batty, like batty arse. riders. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can barely see your ass. Do you think the guys in the gay community who are a little bit more masculine see you as lesser in any way? Oh yeah, definitely because you know we're we're feminine. You know we're apparently trannies which is not true because at the end of the day I don't want to have a sex change I just like having long hair and I like you know experimenting with my makeup and looking different being gay is a sexuality it's not a personality and every single guy has a right to be what they want and how they want to be so I don't understand why we have so many labels in the gay community when you walk out onto the scene say into into a nightclub what kind of reception do you get from guys I've had people come up to me and say, um, you do know you're a boy, right? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, you're not a drag queen. Like, are you trying to transition? And I'm like, no. I try to make everyone like me, but sometimes I do come across as a bitch and a shady queen, which I love. I mean, so, be honest is the best policy. But um, no, I, I definitely feel like sometimes my personality is like a way for me to hide behind, like, kind of the hurt that I've been through. When I was in high school, I was bullied out of high school, actually, for being gay and being really feminine. You know, I had people call me names, I had people trying to rob me, I had people, you know, beating me up, all because... Be I was physically really beating you up? Yes, physically. So I decided upon myself to drop out of high school. I had the exact same thing in school, but I was lucky because I, I would sometimes pass as straight as, as a younger kid. But that's because I would try and butch it up, constantly butching it up, make sure you don't give the gay away. Did you ever have that where you tried to... It would never work because I'm way too feminine. As soon as I opened my mouth, like people would just clock on and be like, oh, you're gay, aren't you? So, um, yeah. Has it impacted your life, the fact that you had to leave school early? Has it made things harder for you? I feel like when you have GCSEs, you have a better chance in life. I feel like I was robbed for my future when I was in school. Fem shaming and stuff like that, it does bring back memories of me being a child. We should be kind of coming together as one big family and kind of fighting off the homophobes. Instead, we're fighting off each other. Jamal has had to become so resilient over the years from so much of that heavy, heavy femme shaming. And it's shocking to think that the one community that's doing this mostly to him is his own. Us gays, I don't understand. You think that after all we've been through, that we'd be the most accepting bunch out there. Femininity is I, frowned upon. Yes. So much, and it infuriates me because of obviously, like, I'm quite feminine. I feel like feminine gay people are at the bottom of the list, a thousand percent. I've even had comments such as, um, feminine gay guys are the gays that give gay people a bad name. Some masculine men, they're like, oh, why are you dressing like that? Why are you looking like that? You're meant to look like this. The iconic gay body where we all know that it's sexy muscle boy and all this. Uh, oh, six packs, eight packs, um, tall, um, masculine. Very toned, muscular, um, sort of overtly, kind of sometimes comically masculine bodies. Tart tops, big muscles. That's the sort of thing that I see a lot of. Gay men are their own worst enemy within the community when it comes to body image. So I have some news. <laughs> um, as part of this documentary, I'm going to be doing a naked photo shoot. Way! Um, it's for Gay Times magazine and a feature that they're doing on body image. And I am terrified. You know, we're constantly fed these images on Instagram, uh, through the media, everywhere online. 
of the perfect body and what that is. And it, it subconsciously makes you think that you need to have that body. Um, so I guess I, I'm worried about thousands of people seeing my body in the buff as it is right now and I feel compelled to go to the gym. I'm sorry, I just don't feel comfortable getting naked as it is. I just feel like I need to tighten up a little bit. Is that okay? Morning. Um, so before I have any breakfast, I'm having um, half the juice of a lemon. It um, speeds up your metabolism, clears out your um, lymphatic system. Here's to a lovely body. Okay, it's dinner time. Nice spicy garlicky chicken, some stir fried broccoli, and, and then I actually toasted those cashews. And I was gonna, oh, look at that. Boom. Carrot sticks, hummus, no wine, no gin, which is really, really hard for me. Eggs, broccoli, um, chicken breast, and basil pesto with olive oil. Get them healthy fats, yo. Uh, just got my hair cut. Dinner tonight, I'm having a uh, sea bass and dandelion tea, and that's it. Why dandelion tea, I hear you ask? Because apparently it's, uh, it helps with water retention. I don't know if I have water retention, but I don't want to take any risks. So I'm here in South London to visit a male-focused inclusive gym to find out where that pressure for gay men to have a perfect body actually comes from. Personal trainer Stephen is going to show me around. Right. Chest is always a very popular thing for the gays. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. As soon as I go into the gym, it's the first thing I, I hit these boys. Um, really? Yeah. Well, let, let's start you off with one of the machines. Okay. okay. Give me ten. That's a little tougher, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I like it though. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. And other cliches. <laughs> I forgot to stop to start counting. What are we at? Eight. <laughs> this looks like a torture contraption. <sighs> <clears throat> Look, it's the same size as my head. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm trying the same way you did. Is okay. that okay? I'll get you off the ceiling. Look, it's pulling me up off the ground. <laughs> okay, okay got, possibly go that's left. a little too heavy yeah, yeah, for yeah. you then. Okay. Let's drop it down to two. Cross like that. Perfect. I like this one. You like that one? Yeah. Because you can really feel it. Yes. It doesn't feel wasteful. It's quite a heterosexual thing, actually, to lift the heaviest weight possible and outcompete the person you're training with. But there's no technique in that. Do you not think that there's a lot of competition in, in gyms between gays, though? Like, oh, he's doing 20s on each arm. I think gays are more interested in who looks better in their low-cut vest mm. than what weights they're lifting. Is there more of a pressure on a gay man? to look a certain way than there is for a heterosexual man. Historically, there's always been more pressure on gay men. Being muscular means being accepted, means you get more sex. So this, this idea of going to the gym has almost become central to the gay personality. If you want to avoid being ostracized as you were when you were at school or whatever, then you hype up the masculinity. Are some feminine gay guys trying to sort of suppress that or make up for that by becoming these bulky muscle gods. Muscularity does counteract effeminate behaviour from other people's perspective. Effeminate is the thing that guys probably are naturally, I know I am, and I love my campsite, but it's not going to get you sex with the masculine guys. Do you think some of this pressure that exists comes from you comparing and contrasting yourself to potentially who's lying in bed beside you? Yeah, and I think, I think we've all done it. You know, I've, I've gone home with guys and they've taken off their T-shirts, if I haven't walked in the door with them with their T-shirt off, and you see this fantastic physique and you compare yourself to them and think, am I good enough? You've actually felt that way? Yes. 
You. Yes. There's no hope for any of us. <laughs> All right, no, three, no, two, no. one, start jumping in the pool. So what are you not happy with? Um, there's like a little... Oh, I have that. There's... Look. That little pooch there. Is yeah, I, I call it a papoose. A papoose. <laughs> it's a papoose of fat. I guess another another bit that I, I don't like is see, see that. Oh, the back fat. It's just a little... Yeah, you know, I have that. Thing. Yeah. Look, look, you can actually grab mine like that. Is that an invitation? I yeah. don't want to touch you without an invitation. No grab <laughs> But what bits do you like then? Um, I don't mind my chest when I do that. But only when you do that. Well, only actually, when I do that. Actually, I like my chest when I do that. I like your chest when you do that. Yeah, but was it so relaxed? What do you feel about your chest now? Mm, don't like the shape of it. it uh, what? Like, describe more. Uh, I don't like the shape of it here. I don't have like a, a nice line that just sticks out, that it's a real deviation from the body. It's a genetic thing. You're not 100% happy with your own body. No. There is a vast difference between what I see and what other people see. If I look in the mirror one morning and I see, you know, less than what I want to, or more than what I want to, <laughs> then, it, yeah, it can make me unhappy with myself. If you feel that bad about yourself, depression and anxiety are natural consequences of it. I hope that one day I don't feel, I don't put myself under as much pressure. That's probably the best that I hope for. But I'm not doing this just to look good for other people. But I can understand that that is a big part of it. And I'd be a liar if I said it wasn't, because, you know, who doesn't love that validation? The problem is, is that what is perfection? You're going to constantly be going around like a hamster in a loop, in a loop, striving for a thing you cannot get. A bit depressing. There's no up. Do you get me? Body image is huge. You want to look as good as you can. Athletic, lean, like muscular, a nice bum. Think Tom Daly. To be honest, it's all gym and fitness. Really muscly and masculine, you know, kind of rugged. I feel like there's a majority of gay men out there that are like mm -hmm. spending their lives at the gym because they know it's gonna like attract who they want to attract. I think that's a problem because beauty doesn't solve anybody's problem. It's the community that is making things worse for itself. Right. Because they're constantly having to live up to this stereotype or this image or and it's just so tiring after a while. Yeah. But, you know, we've all come in different shapes and sizes. to London just over six years ago. It was quite difficult coming out at 16, living up north. I feel people's attitudes are different and that made it more difficult. The bulimia took effect when I was about 17, but I'd say I had issues with my body image and how I looked before that. Within a year or two, it was full blown and it pretty much lasted for the next nine or 10 years. It's difficult to explain exactly what the motivation was, I suppose, behind throwing up, but it had a lot to do with how I looked. It's a control thing. I felt like for a long time it was the only thing I had control over. It was very, very lonely. To be honest, I don't know how I survived. With the community putting so much emphasis on how you look, it's no surprise really that gay men are three times more likely to suffer from an eating disorder than straight men. I'm on my way to meet Rai, a 26-year-old man, Hiya. who suffered from his own eating disorder for 10 years. Do you think the gay community in general is quite judgmental? Yeah, I, th I think it's, they're very judgmental. I, I almost feel that as a gay guy, it's harder to please other gays than it is the rest of society sometimes. What things must a gay man do to fit in? 
a lot of it is based on looks. If you don't kind of conform to certain things, then you know, you're not going to be accepted. And then when you look at other guys who are already fitting into those stereotypes and tribes, and everyone looks like they're having fun and accepting everyone, why wouldn't you think, you know, if I act like that, or if I look like that, I'm going to be included? I wanted to fit in. So, you know, I, I thought, what, what kind of is the most achievable? So obviously me being young, it would be kind of what we call like the kind of slim twink twinks. Yeah. Right. So in this period of adjusting myself and becoming the twink, um, it did more and more become about like my body type and how slim I was. I basically developed an eating disorder. So I was still eating, but I was starting to throw up meals and vomit. It started off slow, but eventually it was every day. It becomes ingrained. It's, it, it's everyday life. Oh, my God. Are you sucking in here? I think I'm tensing. But you can see... It's so skinny. Look at the bone. My hips. Your hip bone's My hip in. sticks right out, and my ribs were sticking right out. If you could say something to him right now, what would you say? Get some help. <laughs> really, you know, get some help. And what kind of feelings or things go through your head then at the worst moment and you know you can't get out of it? It's, it's isolating, even though I had friends. And, you know, the, there were a few times people would ask questions like, are you OK? You know, what's going on? You look sick. Are you sick? But I can, I can never open up. It affects the way you interact with people. It does affect the friendships and the fact that, you know, you love your friends, you love your family, but you're always hiding. It's not just about the physical deception of maybe wearing clothes or wearing makeup so you don't look sick. It's, you know, actually having to make lies up and follow them through and remember what lies you've told people. It made me really low. And in, in the worst times, it made me suicidal. It did? Yeah. Those thoughts actually came into your mind? At what point did you think this has gotten too I'd been in hospital quite a few times because at one point I was drinking quite a lot as well. Obviously, if I haven't ate for a few days or I have ate and I've thrown everything up, it's understandable that my body can't take alcohol. So I'd have two or three glasses of wine and pass out and wake up in hospital. And the last time, it was actually a nurse who had already seen me in hospital and she'd said, you know, you're going to kill yourself. You're going to die. It carries on. And I wouldn't say that that was the moment of change, but it was the trigger of the change to recover. Do you think in the community, the fact that this is happening to so many people is, is known or even understood? It's like a taboo subject. People don't want to talk about it. And because people aren't talking about it, how can anyone understand it? But I would be surprised if someone was able to prove that this wasn't happening to a lot of guys, because I think it probably is. The gay community puts so much pressure on us to look a certain way, and Rye is a perfect example of when that pressure for the perfect body goes too far. Although I knew there were issues in the community with this, I now understand that there are so many people suffering in silence. It's way bigger than we ever imagined. People are really good at hiding it, though. Really good. In a bid to raise awareness about all the body image issues I've come across, I agreed to bear all for a photo shoot. And today's the day. Uh, so we've arrived at the studio. Say hi, guys. Um, this is Ryan from Gay Times. Hi, Ryan. Hi. So Ryan just uh, gave me a synopsis of what's going on. What is it that I have to do today? Take your clothes off. All of them? All of them. Not even like tidy whities Not even. Nothing, guys. Fucking nothing. So this was the uh, the last naked issue for Gay Times. Which oh my God, to... they're so attractive. It's not too posed, it's playful, and it's a good way of sort of showing your personality as well. Okay. The most important thing for any photo shoot, for, it doesn't matter what you're doing, is it's all about confidence. Confidence is the key thing. Okay. And I reckon give it 10 minutes of the photo shoot and you'll be absolutely fine. 
I've trained, I've dieted, I've spray tanned, but Luke is gonna give me a final polish and a finishing touch. Just take your jacket off. The first of many items to be removed. <laughs> What would be your concern about doing a, a naked shoot? I just, I don't feel like it's perfect. But I don't, also then I, I realise that nothing can be perfect. Just stand <laughs> up, take your shirt off for me. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> can we do this again? <laughs> What's this now? This, uh, Oils. Being oiled up, literally being oiled up. <laughs> mm, that's nice. I like that. Okay. Do you normally contour your models' bodies? Some Maybe. of them, yes, but for the purposes of this shoot, I'm not going to do it. Really? It just needs to be you, raw, okay. real, as it is. I'm feeling okay, I think. I am worried about getting aroused. <laughs> don't, don't even go there. So, what are we doing now? Come on over, we'll do a couple of test shots, okay. and then we'll get going. <laughs> Can someone help me? Oh, no, now I need to change hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep hold of that. Cool. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> OK, so take a seat. OK, let's start with a couple of slightly moodier sort of looks. That's good. Perfect. Stripped bare, this leap of faith is about so much more than a pretty photo. Perfect. Good. I've been handed the chance to highlight issues in the gay community about the body Great. image pressures people feel, which for some lead to very dark places. But for everyone I've met, these issues have led to second guessing, moments of insecurity and the desire to find validation. Can I see any of them? It's like I have no neck, that's the only thing I'm noticing here. That's nicer. Oh, that's, oh, I like that one. Yeah. I've seen a couple of the pictures and I'm really surprised. I'm, like, I'm really happy with them. My confidence is through the roof. I look like, woo, woo, I don't care. <laughs> Standing here in my birthday suit, the one thing that is absolutely clear is that my body doesn't define who I am. Can you maybe swap hands quickly and do it the other way? <laughs> Sorry. Good, perfect. Like that there. Try the other way. Let's have your other hand up with your glasses. <laughs> okay, so slightly moodier. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, that works really well. 